Hey, good morning, great Gopher fans. What's going on? Welcome to Golden Dunkers Live. I'm your host, Eric Harris, a.k.a. the Defensive Specialist. And we have a special treat for you guys today. Hope all is going well. First of all, thanks for all the support and love that everyone has showed on the first two episodes so far. It's been great feedback. Continue to give that feedback. This is our community, Gopher fans. This is where we come and unite and support one another and root our Gophers on. So once again, thank you so much. This is our third episode. Special guest today. This guy is definitely a Gopher legend. Um, this is my first time meeting him. I told him how much you know I respected his play on the court. He gave 110% every night out. Guys, just it's a great individual. Every, everybody I talk to about him says nothing but great things about him. I just told him I can't. He scored 1,700 points, a lot of buckets, a lot, a lot of buckets while he was here. But what what I loved about him when I was doing some research, it was before. Well, I think the you guys beat IU at their place. I was watching an interview, and a reporter asked you, "What is it going to take to?" get another win against Indiana, and you said defense. We have to lock in on the defensive end. Those guys obviously had a lot of pros on that team, Victor Oladipo, um, Zella, right? Zella was on that team. Zella, yeah. Yeah, so you were basically like, we have to lock up defensively defensively if we're going to have any chance to win. So you were a two-way player. You scored a lot of points, but you mm -hmm. also got after it defensively, shot the three ball well, wasn't afraid to go up, up top and throw it on somebody. So you had all the pieces in your game, bro. So from one gopher to another, I appreciate everything you did while you were here. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Career. And so we just want to celebrate you and talk about what you're doing now. You know, memories against playing against Michigan State. You know, we're going to have a good time tonight. So gopher fans, ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you Mr. Hollins, what's up, Dre? What's going on, man? What's up, man? I appreciate the introduction from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate that, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, it's great, obviously, to be on here, you know, being in the Gopher community, being a Gopher fan, talking to you. You know, we've been through we've been through everything. Uh, like, you know, just different generations of players. And, you know, just it's, it's a great opportunity to come and uh, chat with you guys. Definitely appreciate you, man. You're over in Belgium now, right? Yeah, in Belgium, uh, just working out. I'm not playing right now. Uh, kind of taking like a mental and physical break because I played. I started off in Lithuania this year. And uh, after Lithuania, I went to Finland for a couple of weeks. And then after Finland, I went to Sweden for about a month. And and it was just, it was just a lot of running around and I was coming off of a injury. So that's kind of what led to me leaving teams. Okay. Well, everything happens for a reason, bro. I sincerely yeah. believe that um, wherever you land next, they're going to get a great one in you, man. So keep working, keep grinding. You know, sure. I know that's a part of your DNA. Excuse me one second, Dre. We're having, you know, Small technical difficulty. We're over at the Athletes Village, Dre. This place is unbelievable. It's crazy. All the bells and whistles. I don't know if you got a chance to see it, but everything yeah. you need is here, bro. It's everything. crazy. Have you been here before? Yes, I have. Uh, Austin, actually, Austin Hollins and I, we visited there uh, last summer. We we worked out there a couple times, and, uh, you know, we got a tour of the entire facility, and, we saw a little like a uh, summer practice that they had, and all I, all we could say was wow, and that we were jealous. We wish we <laughs> had something like that. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So let's set the record straight. You and Austin aren't brothers. Y'all not related at all. No, and some people still ask like, How, "How's your brother doing?" But I think it's people. I think people in Minnesota got the gist of that we're not related. But uh, like other people, like other players that we've seen around, uh, you know, just playing around, they, they ask like, hey, "How's your brother doing?" Like, <laughs> yeah, man, we're not we're not related, but I mean, we we kind of are now. Like, just like my brother. Uh, the the crazy coincidence is that we're both from Memphis, and we both uh, we both have the same last name. So 
Uh, we both went to Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's hard. It's hard to say. Like, are you lying to me when we say we all not brothers? So, a lot of coincidence. So that's a perfect segue, bro. Yeah. Um, Memphis, Tennessee. Can you take us back a little bit in terms of your journey growing up in Memphis? When I think of Memphis, Dre, I think of two things. A lot of people coming from the East Coast, you know, East Coast hip hop was yeah. big when you're from East Coast, listen to nothing but East Coast hip hop, yeah. especially coming to Minnesota. That's all I knew. Mm -hmm. But a good friend of mine introduced me to Eight Ball and MJG. <laughs> when I think of Memphis, wow. that's one of the things I think of. And then obviously Penny, man, Penny Hardaway. Yeah. You know, in my era, he was one of the best, man, to do it if, if it wasn't for injuries. Penny was a problem. So, those are the two things I think of when I think of Memphis, and also barbecue. Hey, best now, barbecue in the world. Nation in the world. In the world. In the world. I promise. I promise. Bill Street. You go on Bill Street. It's some of the best barbecue you've ever had, or not even on Bill Street. Just in Memphis in general. In general. In general. It's great. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like exactly. I can't even. I'm like skeptical. Skeptical. When I go, if I get, if I want to order ribs or not, because I know I, I'm like, I have a high standard. I'm so spoiled. I'm spoiled. Yeah, I'm spoiled. So I'm like, if the ribs, not, they might be good, but then <laughs> I'm like, ah, they're not that good. <laughs> yeah. But what you know about 8 Ball and MJG? Not too much, because that's a little bit, that's a little bit <laughs> your time. But I know some of the songs like Play a Fly, I'm more like, I'm more like Yo Gotti. Gotcha. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of upcoming rappers, uh, Young Dolph, uh, Black Youngster. Uh, there's plenty of Memphis guys that are coming up. Memphis is coming up out here in the in the rap game. And I mean, I know Justin Timberlake, he's from Memphis. Like a lot, a lot of, I mean, it's a lot of talent out there. Yeah, Memphis is a beautiful city, man. Yeah. So just take us back, Dre, in terms of growing up in Memphis, the competition, High school basketball, AAU basketball. Who were some of the guys? I know it's so much talent in Memphis. Can you just talk to us about playing in that talent-rich city? Yeah. Um, I mean, just growing up, it was basically it's basically two or three powerhouse teams uh, for AAU, Memphis. So uh, Memphis War Eagles. Uh, it was the Memphis Stallions at the time and the uh, uh, Memphis Wild MCA and all the like best players basically played on those teams. So we all know each other and played against each other growing up. And the competition was always, you know, once we got to a certain point, we always meet in a championship and it'd be all the best players. You know, as we grew up, we split off into the, uh, you know, high school basketball, which was insane. Uh, my, I want to say my junior year, like, it got it like all, every gym was packed when we we played. Uh, I actually my team White Station High School. I played with Joe Jackson. He uh, went to Memphis Tigers. He's an okay. All American. I learned a lot from him. I played with I played with two other pros on the team, uh, but we uh, we were uh, uh, we lost in the state championship my first year, uh, sophomore year. We won it. My uh, junior year, we lost in the state championship, and then my uh, senior year, we lost in the semifinals to the eventual champions. But uh, I ended up coming out with Mister Tennessee, so that was my trophy for it. Cool. Yeah. So, how did the Tigers let you get away in those SCC schools? Yeah, it's from. It was it was more I wanted to branch out because I had I mean all the SEC I like I'm I committed to Minnesota before my senior year. Okay. So my junior summer, uh I made my decision because I said I wanted to I wanted people who wanted me from you know from the beginning. Uh but uh you know, Passioner called me, actually Penny called me after I committed to try to get me to come. Uh I talked to him and I was like, nah, I already made my decision. But uh, no, nah, they definitely were after me since I was young. Like we used to go to the elite camps. They used to invite all the local talent to the little elite camps over there. And you know, uh, the SEC schools, uh, I actually, my la I had a, uh, one of my five last choices was Ole Miss. They were there and Ole Miss is only 45 minutes away from Memphis. So, 
you know, I, I, that was in, kind of intriguing to me, but I wanted to, you know, see, you know, adventure out. No, definitely, definitely. And that's how I was from New York, people like Minnesota, what's in Minnesota, but people don't understand once you get here, you experience the campus, you know, the great teammates, it's a beautiful city, man. It's just, it just you, you your soul once you get here. You just have to get here to see it. You know, it's, it's a hidden gem for sure. People don't know that. People don't know that it's a hidden gem for sure. But I think I think people are starting to realize, like it's 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 really nice, right? Uh, five minutes from downtown, right on University. Now the campus is incredible with all the construction going on, all the nice housing. They they're just I mean. It's a lot of things going on. You got the Timberwolves there. You got the uh, what the Wild there. You got the Twins there. Then like you, the the uh, the Gophers are the only D one program in the state. So I mean, so that's a lot. Man, you got your coaching slash recruiting hat on, man. So <laughs> you ready for that, man? But yeah. in all honesty, Dre, this is only the only Big Ten school where, like you said, you're five minutes from downtown. So yeah. you have access to the city. It's everything. Um, you have access to everything. Yes, they, sir. Campus is huge. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's It was heaven. <laughs> honestly, I mean, other than the cold, cold weather, you, you but you can get over <laughs> that. I mean, you're from New York, so you're used to it. Exactly. It was a shock for you coming from Memphis, though. It had to be. And yeah. also, that's special. Not too many people get a call from Penny Hardaway, bro. Yeah, no, nah, it was, it, I mean, he, it's because, like, actually, when, when we played Memphis, people were trying to say that they didn't recruit me, trying to amp the story, but uh, they, they recruited me hard. Like, Passioner, like, called me, like, constantly. Like, I was, I was in contact with them all the time. They were at all our games, all my games, so. It wasn't like they weren't trying to get me. It's just I, I wanted to branch out, and all the guys that I played with growing up went to Memphis. Like yeah. every guard, like Will Barden was was there. Uh, Joe Jackson, Chris Crawford, he's uh, playing overseas now. Uh, Adonis Thomas playing overseas. Like all like it's guard uh, laden. So it was just I mean I felt like I would have better opportunity going elsewhere. Yes, sir. And I can speak for Gopher fans everywhere. You made the right choice, bro. So thank you for sticking to that commitment. For sure. So Coach Tubby Smith was here your freshman year. Freshman and sophomore. Freshman split. and sophomore year. So can you talk a little bit about Coach Smith and the role he played in recruiting you and the type yeah. of father figure slash mentor he was during your time here? Yeah, man. It was like – just from his personality off the court, he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Honestly, like from the bottom of my heart, like he still like texts my parents. My parents still have uh, text messages, like communication with them. He's not like big time. He's gonna take his time out to go and talk to you, like and actually engage in the conversation. And I mean, just that brought was one of the reasons I came. Just his his character out, outside of the court. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Like, he gave me a shot. Like he started me as a freshman and he jump started my career. So, I mean, I, I got nothing but praise for him. Yes, sir. I met Coach Smith a couple of times and great guy. His wife is great, man. Just genuine good people. So shout out to Coach Tubby Smith. Yeah. So let, let's get into the season. Your freshman year, you just mentioned you started. Yeah. So. I was gonna ask you this a little bit later, but I'm gonna go right into it. I'm gonna quiz you. Who was the starting five your freshman year? Let's see if you can remember that. It was it was uh, me, Austin Hollins. Who who was the three? It might have been Joe. Was Joe been starting with me? <laughs> uh, no, it was Rodney. Rodney, uh, Trevor. And then Ralph Sampson. So was, nice was, right was I was I right? But yeah, it had to have been Rodney and Austin. Rodney yeah, yeah. Rodney jumped out the gym, right? Huh? Rodney jumped out the gym. Oh yeah, every every day. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my um one of my first uh, pickup games at the U. 
uh, he posted me up, and you know, I was I was forearming him. He just dropped step and dunked on me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, all right, all right, I'm just gonna let him go next time. Yeah, that guy was a beast. Yeah. That was 2012, right? Yeah. 2011, 2012. 2011, 2012, yeah. Yes, sir. So that was a pretty nice five. Trevor was on last show, man. Trevor's a great guy, man. Unbelievable yeah. individual. Monster on the course. So take us through that year, man, if you can remember, remember it a little bit. Uh, it was actually kind of, I mean, we wanted to have a bigger year, but Trev got hurt that year. He uh, uh, tore his ACL in the in the Thanksgiving tournament, Old Spice in uh, Orlando. And that kind of set us back because uh, I think we had to put Rodney at the four. He's a, he's an undersized four. But, um, like, I think just we just had a slump where we, you know, we kind of got things going a little bit, but – at the end, we picked it up and we made that NIT run, we made it to the NIT championship. Um, I mean, we we really had a great time. I, I, from what I remember about that year, the NIT championship run was great. Like we were on the road for two weeks straight. Like we played uh, our first game in at LaSalle in Philadelphia. Then I think we went to Miami after that. And then um, where else did we play? Oh, then we went to Middle Tennessee which is actually a funny story. Uh, I I played all of my championship games, all the games that we play for the state championship is at Middle Tennessee. So I had a lot of friends and family and I had friends that attended uh, Middle Tennessee that could see that game. And it, it was uh, it was fun. And then we went to New York to play, to play uh, the last two games. We Unfortunately, we lost to Stanford, but that was definitely a, a learning year, but it was it was good for us. I mean, we bounced back from I think we lost like seven in a row, I think. And then we ended up winning the last eleven out of fourteen, maybe. I don't know. I don't know my number. It was a while ago. Yeah, yeah, it was a while. Yeah. That was a great run. A lot of people, the NIT can definitely be beneficial. A lot of people look down on it after not getting into the tournament, but it can definitely help in terms of you know, bonding and maturing for the next season. So, I mean, a lot of and that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened for us. We end up uh, doing really well, making to the tournament that next year. You know. I know you're not going to know this one off the top of your head. Do you know who won the championship in 2012, 2011, 2012? Your freshman year? My freshman year. It might have been. It was either – was was Anthony Davis – no, no, he was good. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, it, if Anthony Davis was there, it was Kentucky, yeah. Because I remember watching them play uh, – because they played Indiana at Indiana that year. I remember watching it on TV and Wilkins, actually. How special is Williams Arena, Dre? One of the best in the Big Ten. One of the best in the country, I believe. Like, I mean, top. I mean, it's a lot of great gems out there, but it's special, like, it gets super loud. I'll never forget how loud it was when we beat Indiana. And uh, I mean, other times too, but just like the court, the feel of it, like it's special. It's different from like stepping up, like you're on the stage. So it's 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 real fun to play in the barn. I loved it all the time. The barn is special. When it gets rocking in there, Wisconsin came in and it was a tough, just transitioning, transitioning into the state of the Gophers right now. Last game against Wisconsin, it was so loud in there. Bet. And uh, that was a huge game. A close friend of mine said, you know, that was a make or break game for the Gophers. If they win, NCAA tournament looks really good. If not, they may not get in. I hope that's not true. I mean, that Wisconsin game, it was jumping in there, man. The barn gets crazy. Yeah, it definitely does. It what gets crazy. That, what, what do they call it? What's the student section? Uh, Ah, is it a name? The barnyard. The barnyard. That's it. That's it. That, those are one of the funniest. They're one of the funniest uh, student sections in the Big Ten for sure. Yes, them, sir. them in uh, Michigan State. Yeah, definitely. Uh, perfect transition, Sparty man. Michigan State. All I remember about playing Michigan State on the road, you see nothing but green and white. Whole crowd, green and white. Every road game in the Big Ten is tough, but it just seemed like their fans were on top of you, screaming the whole game. 
Their head I have coach. so much respect for Coach Izzo. Doing my research for today, he was he's been there for 24 years, man. That's crazy. That, that's unheard of. But Michigan State is a tough environment to play in. What are some of your memories going up against Michigan State and those great teams over the years? Just like, I mean, man, I remember playing against Draymond a couple of games. Uh, oh, you were there with Draymond? Yeah, my my uh my freshman year was his senior year. Or okay. I don't know if he registered or not, but yeah, him, Adrian Payne, Keith Applin, uh, Gary Gary Harris, uh, all of those guys. Uh, what's what's the guy's name? The light skinned guy, uh, Denzel Valentine. But yeah. playing it, we we actually got. I got. I think I got one win at uh, Michigan State, and that, that was my Yeah, I think we only got one, but it was always close. And then they would go on the run, and then the, it would just go crazy. And you know, yeah, you, know, you know how it is. What's what's yes, sir. On the what's road, you know, one or two things. The fans get involved. It's tough. Yeah, that's that's um that's where we are this year. Kind of like we're in every game. We've yeah. proven that we can compete with any team. We fight, we play hard, and then it's just that little segment where, you know, things just kind of go haywire, and then, you know, yeah, it, it kind of is a wrap from there. I've definitely been a part of a good amount of those games where you're in it the whole time, and then it's just like a, a two-minute stretch where it's, things don't go your way, the fans get involved, and then you can't recover sometimes. But, you know, that's how well, it is. So I know you're still in great shape, man. We need a three-point shooter, man. That's been one of our struggles, man. <laughs> I would definitely take a fifth year. <laughs> I would definitely come back and take a fifth year. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I'm looking forward to today. Every game moving forward is a big game, man. Yeah. So we need to get this win today. I, I see it. I see the six. What's that? Huh? What'd you say? I said I see a... Uh, have six wins, six losses, and like at that, and that um, fourth and fifth spot is kind of close together, right? Yeah, so a lot of teams locked in, like right in there together. So one win here, two wins. The mentality has to be Dre take one day at a time. Yeah. You can't worry about what everybody's saying in terms of the NCAA getting in, not getting in. The focus has to be one game at a time. Taking care of the ball, obviously turnovers hurt. And like you said, like I mentioned about you earlier, you have to be able to defend for the whole game. You can't give up easy buckets because, like you said, that crowd gets into it. So every possession, we have to make it tough for Michigan State. Every defensive possession, you know, we got to cause havoc and cause problems. Yeah, I remember my first two years before they changed the, uh, the rules kind of, or the I, you probably experienced it too, where the score was you're not scoring over 55, 60 points in the Big Ten my first two years because it was you like I remember going in there a couple of times and getting fouled, get, getting knocked on the ground, and there was no call. And yeah. it was like, that's how the Big Ten is like you got to earn your buckets. Like they it's strictly defense, but they changed the rules a little bit because they want to see a little bit more scoring. But yes, sir. but. But still, you have to you have to be able to stop. If you can't stop anybody, it's, your chances of winning are slim. Well, I know you adapted to that coming from Memphis to grind and grit. You know where, where you guys come from in Memphis. I know you weren't afraid of that physical play. No, no, hey, that that gets me going. That makes me want to play harder. So. Yeah, I, uh, it didn't bother me. That's why. I, that's why I did well at the PG my first two years. Like it didn't bother me too much because I was used to used to getting fouled and stuff. So, yes, sir. So take us. Coach Smith leaves. Mm -hmm. Coach Patino comes in your junior year. Yeah. So I was fortunate. I only played for one coach, Coach Clem Haskins. But what was that like? That transition, Coach Patino coming and taking over after. It was it was it was kind of weird because we just come off such a good season. Like we uh, made it to the NCAA tournament, uh, lost in the third round. We were ranked eighth in the nation at one point, uh, and then you know, I mean, 
you know, uh, administration made a decision and make a change. And, you know, Coach, Coach Patino came in with a lot of energy, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, fast pace. He changed, like, how we play, like, more pressing and move fast and more pick and rolls and whatnot. So I think that was the biggest change. And he moved me from the one to the two. Like, I was kind of splitting time uh, mm -hmm. once, once he got there. Okay. Yeah. So more up tempo style. Yeah, fast pace, up tempo. Try to to is more defensive minded. Like to uh, speed the other team the team up to make bad decisions, take quick shots, and then we go the other way and uh, you know good, uh, try to score in transition as fast as possible. Okay. Yeah, we got to adapt on the fly a little bit. I mean, Coach Patino, I love his energy. Anytime I'm around him, his energy is infectious. Yeah. You know, great guy, you know, so that had to be hard, though. I, I always wondered what it was like to. Yeah, it's different going from a, and then another coach comes in and you have to just adapt. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very different. But I mean, he came, Coach Bettino came in with the right energy, got a lot of things done, uh, you know, just tried to, uh, I guess, rejuvenate or just add more to the program. Well, I got to do it to you, Dre. Um, Akeem and, uh, and Trevor gave a prediction. We're 0 for 2 on Gophers Live, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. but those two games were close, man. We had a chance to win both of them. So yeah. what's your prediction for today against MSU? Let me look at ESPN. <laughs> look at the spread. <laughs> Let's see. But 18 and 5, 16 and 7, they rank ninth. We just we do we just take an L to uh, Wisconsin. Yes. Well, I can't I can't I can't go against my team, man. I can't go against the Gophers. So I'm just I'm just hopefully I can I can give them some luck or not luck, but give them some more some oomph today. So I'm going I'm going with Minnesota, man. I can't no, I can't no. be like Sparty. We got to be Sparty. Yeah, man. I can't go. Up, I, I feel that if we come out and play like we're capable of playing, we can get the W on the road. Yeah, exactly. So talk to me now, Dre. Now you're playing a sport and you're making money for playing that sport. Yeah. Take us into the mindset of a professional athlete playing overseas, yeah. uh, whatever. Talk to us about the countries you've been to so far and the competition, level of competition, the living circumstances. Can you can you go through that a little bit for us? Yeah, I'll try to sum it up. Uh, as far as mentality wise, it's you have to change it completely because it's not it's not more. I mean, you think about the team, but it's your job now, and you can get cut. So you have to, especially being an I guess being an American, you have to go out and get your numbers. They're expecting you to get your numbers, so you have to really focus on that. Like more more so winning and losing because if you Focus on the uh, the other. You're not getting your numbers. You can get cut. So man, so cutthroat over there, man. You yeah. can have 35 one game. Don't come back and have 10 or 12. <laughs> you might be on the next thing smoking, man. Exactly. So it's it's you got to change your mentality completely, um, and you just have to be mentally tough because it gets lonely if you don't have a family. I mean, you don't have a, a girl or girlfriend. It gets very lonely. Uh, over here, so you have to, you know, have to stay grounded, and uh, you know, as far as living situations, I mean, it can vary depending on what country, uh, what city in the country. Like, uh, it just, it just varies. Like, I've been to Belgium, France, uh, Germany for one month. Uh, last year, I was in Hungary for the entire year. And this year, I've been to three different places. That's what I was talking about. That goes back to me talking about uh, work focus on getting your numbers. Because I'm more of a player who just worry about winning, and my numbers come with that. That's what I did all, did all through uh, college. But this year, I've been to uh, start off in Lithuania, uh, two weeks in Finland, and then I was in I was last in Sweden. So. Yeah, I've been a. Uh, I've, I've seen the. I've seen the world, and you know, coming from Memphis, I never thought I would would have been playing. I mean, I don't know. I just. 
I just didn't think I'd be seeing the world. Isn't it a blessing, man, coming yeah. from the environments we come from? Most people never leave the Bronx. Most people <laughs> never leave Memphis, but we had a chance to get a great education and travel the world. Like it, it's such a beautiful experience. And really I think a lot of times we take that for granted, but traveling the world like you are, man, yeah, beautiful thing. It is, man. I've seen Brussels, Paris three times. Uh, I've been to Amsterdam, been to Berlin, uh, been to Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. It's, I, I, I can go on. Like, it's it's crazy. Like, I, when I go back home and I talk to my friends and I tell them where I've been, they be like, like, where is Sweden? Like, they, like, they don't even know where, where it is. So I have to explain. <laughs> Well, keep going, Dre. Keep going. You have um, obviously a lot of miles left. So we wish you nothing but the best on your journey moving forward. Whatever country you go to next year, you're a great guy. You work hard. Great mindset. So you're going to be successful on and off the court. So I keep going, brother. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. I'll be I'll be in Minnesota this summer. I'm going to come up there and uh, get some training in because I have a trainer up there, Chauncey. The hoops in Christ. So uh, I'm going I'm to come up there and get some work in. Hopefully I can grab a bite to eat, grab a lunch or something with you. See. Oh, definitely. Well, you know, sometimes it's, um, it's good to mix it up with trainers, man. You know, that's what I do too, man. So I, I would love to get some work in with you too. So we can do it. I love trainers like school teachers, you know, each teacher can give something different to the client or the student. So you know, I'm giving a little plug to myself right here, but yeah. I would love to get some work in with you too, man. So hopefully we could get that in. We can set it up. Yes, sir. So Dre, one last question. How would you like go for fans to remember you for your time here? You did four years, 1,700 points, man. I can't get, I didn't know you scored that many points, man. Yeah, man. I didn't know that many, but how would you like go for fans to remember you for the time that you spent here? I mean, just just what I gave to the program, uh, you know, the fun times on the court, just smiling and, the, you know, just the memories like that, that we were able to give fans like make being able to, you know, travel like we, we were still playing when other teams weren't like we played and we won an NIT. We won a college championship, a national championship, even though people don't, I guess, you know, like you said, people don't uh, take the NIT very seriously, but our fans got a chance to take a trip to New York to see us play and uh, take a trip to the uh, NCAA tournament. So, you know, I just, just the fun that they had and I was, I, I was happy to bring it and, you know, just remember me by my smile, I guess. Yes. Yes. Your smile is infectious, brother. Smile is infectious. How can people reach out to you on social media platforms yeah, man, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm, I, I'm not a big social media guy, but I'm gonna start getting more back into it. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Dre Hollins. Uh, my Twitter is Andre Hollins. Uh, and then what, what else am I on? I'm on, I'm on Facebook as well. So, you know, you can, I'm, I'm on all, pretty much all social media networks and, you know, if you have any questions, uh, now I'm going I'm to start trying to, you know, get more into thinking about life after basketball, you know, starting new stuff, uh, new opportunities. I'm also on LinkedIn as well. So that's, that's an important one. So people, this young man, he got you got your marketing degree from the Carlson School. Yes. Yes. Correct? Yes. Yep. Got my marketing degree at Carlson, man. Congrats on that, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I just finished mine up. So people, you can see that this guy, he has it all. He's ready at life after basketball, hit him up. He, he's gonna be successful in life, period. So Dre, just wanna thank you for coming on. Thank you for your time. Appreciate we, it, you. we appreciate you. You're a go for great brother. Thanks, we man. have to get your fake brother on one day. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll tell him to get on. Yeah. Come on. I will, I will. I, uh, I actually, I just saw him last weekend, so so I'm uh, I've been talking to him about getting on. So 
Cool. Tell them we need to go on. Yeah. And yeah. thank you again, Dre. Be sure to follow the Golden Dunkers on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. This is, like I said, an environment for Gopher fans to come and, and support one another, find out what their favorite players are doing. So thank you for the feedback. Thank you for tuning in. I'm on Instagram as well, defensive specialist Eric Harris. You can find me. You want to contact me also, 1-833-LOCK-YOU-UP. Once again, 1-833-LOCK-YOU-UP. Thank you, Gopher fans. Thank, thank you, Dre, once again. And go Gophers. We got to be sparty today. Go Gophers. Yes, sir. Be good, sir. Yes, sir. Later.